what's going on guys? Uh, welcome to uh, the first of what is going to be several installments of where I kind of talk about some of my gear. Uh, I, I'm a total gearhead. I love, I love, 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 love talking about gear. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go through my current uh, recording setup, what I'm using for uh, drums, pedals, stands, recording software, uh, pretty much every little detail of what I'm using is for anything is that goes into my uh, into my covers and in my videos. So uh, let's start with the drums. Um, I get lots of comments about this drum set. I've actually done a video about it already. Um, go ahead and check my Ludwig Vistalite review and sound sample. Um, what this is, this is a 1973-ish. I mean, you can't really totally date a Ludwig drum set by a serial number. All we can do is get an approximation. And this is a 1973-ish uh, blue, as you can see by the colors, Ludwig Vistalite. Um, I got this um, off a of Craigslist ad. A guy had it up. Um, it was it was pretty beat up. If you see the video, I kind of go through the restoration process on it. But uh, some things that are interesting about this kit, um, the fact that it is older is, you can tell some things like um, the tone control here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but later on, Ludwig, because they had a problem with these cracking the shells, Ludwig went to a three-hole tone control. So you can tell this is an earlier model because of that. And also, on the uh, reissue Vistas, on the 14-inch rack tom, they are now a... Huh, one, two, three, four, yeah, they're an 8-lug, whereas these are a 6-lug. Um, the, original, the original Ludwigs are a 6-lug. And you can also tell, too, is... Uh, by the, the gaskets on the inside, you can always tell a reissue really quick, is uh, back in the 70s, they used these Mylar, I guess it's kind of like a Mylar plastic, white plastic gasket. So that's just a couple things you can do to uh, differentiate on the, um, on the reissues versus the uh, uh, newer ones, or the, uh, the older ones, I'm sorry. Uh, all right, so these symbols. Um, these symbols are, um, these are my practice symbols. Uh, this one and these hi-hats actually came with this drum set when I bought it. Um, this is a, uh, just a regular old Zildjian A, probably 1980s, judging by the, uh, what's left of the logo, and a medium thin, uh, uh, so, you know, it's your everyday 16 inch medium thin crash. Really good all around, all around sounding symbol. Uh, this guy right here has seen better days, but I love, I love it with the Kraken. It's got such a nice dry trashy sound. Uh, really cool symbol. Uh, it's an old 16 inch K. I'm sorry, this is, a, is this an 18? I'm really bad at telling. Yeah, this is an 18. I'm not good at judging distance. Um, that's my wife. Um, but this is a 16 inch K dark crash. This is an 18 inch A crash. Uh, the symbol, my furnace just kicked on. Wonderful. I could have swore, I could have swore I turned it off. All right, hold on one second. I'm going to kill my furnace. All right, uh, I'm back. The thing should shut off any minute now. I, I set it to 62, so there's no way that thing is going back on. It was already at 66, so apparently this house is colder than I thought. Uh, but the symbols, 18-inch um, medium A, um, 16 inch K dark crash with a crack in it. It sounds killer because it's all trashy. Uh, the, uh, this ride symbol, um, I, this is my very first ride symbol that came with my very first drum set. I'm not exactly sure of the year. Um, I'm assuming it's late 60s uh, because it came with a late, it had to be late 60s because it was a keystone badge. Ludwig Mont Orange that I got rid of because I was stupid. Just no no excuse other than just being dumb. Uh, it's a 22 inch A. Like I said, this was my main ride symbol. I never never ever gigged with another ride symbol my entire drumming life, ever. I recorded albums with this thing. Um, 
but I never ever recorded or ever owned another, well, I did own other ride cymbals, but they were practice cymbals. This is the only cymbal I ever did with my entire life until I bought my uh, K, my 22 inch K Zildjian that is now my main gigging ride cymbal. So this thing served me well, it's retired. It's even, it's got some keystoning on the, uh, up on the bell here. It's, it's, it's a little beat up, you know, but it's, it's, it's a great sounding ride. Big, washy crash. I mean, I love it. I love this symbol. Um, it was on a road with me for years. You know, it just went everywhere with me. This is the one constant in my drumming life is this symbol. Uh, the hi-hat symbols. Uh, these are what's called Zilco. All right. A long, long time ago, before there was Sabian, the Zildjian company owned... Um, uh, own a factory in they own that factory in Canada where Sabian's made now it's the two Zildjian brothers broke up uh, but they made these these symbols in Canada and they were like an entry level symbol they also made uh, Zilko's that were better but I'm not sure when those were made somebody that knows a lot more about this could answer that question but these are just like entry level symbols I said they're just they're just they're kind of cool sound, and they got like a trashy sound to them um they're just my practice symbols. Um, oh, let's go. Oh, for my in-ears. Um, for my in-ears, I just got these a little while ago. These are uh, Shure SE 215s. Um, they're about 100 bucks. Uh, I had always used uh, cheaper buds, but I kind of I decided to splurge a little bit. Not really splurge. I mean, they were only 100 bucks, but... Um, I like I actually like these because you get a really good seal with them and they are comfortable in your ear. Uh, a lot of times with the cheaper buds, um, they they really like your ear starts to ache after a while. All right, I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna grab the camera and I'm gonna get I'm gonna start looking at everything else. So give me one second here. So through the miracle of editing, this none of this will be here. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about this guy right here. Uh, these are my lights. So far, this is what I'm using to illuminate my drum area. Um, they're just a couple of like Husky. I bought them at Home Depot. They're LEDs. They were they weren't they weren't cheap, but they're LEDs, so they'll they'll last forever. Um, I think they were a hundred bucks. Um, I'd actually I think I'm probably gonna get another set. So I could just get a, a more, you know, a better looking wash. Um, right now the wash is really directed and it, it kind of, there's some shadows and stuff. So a uh, little lighting 101 for you guys that don't know. If you got lights on either side coming in at an angle from one from the left and from the right, it'll eliminate a lot of shadows. Um, I learned that in my AV trade. Uh, so this guy right here, um, get that. That's uh, MXL 2006, which I'm using for our room sound. I did a review on it. Um, I'm going to get another one of these and spread them out so I could get a little more depth in my recordings. Um, just uh, get a little wider sound pattern maybe, hopefully. Um, you can see here, uh, I do use a kick port. I do honestly don't know if that really does any good for um, a mic drum. I think it's more for unmiked kits. I think that's where it makes a difference. In a mic kit, I really, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Um, my microphones, my Tom microphones are um, Audio-Technica. Now this is, this is uh, when I about two last year, two years ago, um, I decided I needed to get some drum mics. Um, just just because gigging, I didn't have any drum mics. A lot of times I go places and we're playing a bigger room and there's no way to mic my kit. So uh, I went out and I I just I just wanted an economical set of drum mics because let's face it, if you're playing a, a club, you don't you just kind of need something to fill it up a little bit. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not playing. Uh, the LA form or anything like that. So 
I bought these Audio Technicas uh, MB, what are they? MB5Ks? Yeah. Uh, MB5Ks. Um, the Tom mics actually aren't bad at all. I'm, I kind of like them. Um, decent sound. You know, nice balance of attack and, and, and warmth. Uh, the kick drum mic, one of these days, I'm going to get a different kick drum mic because I am not a fan of this kick drum mic at all. Um, I'll probably get a Shure or maybe a KGD-112 or something. Um, but for now, it does the trick. Uh, so that's, you know, those are my Tom mics. Uh, the, I think I paid, uh, I don't want to say they're about 120 bucks for the set. Uh, and they do have really nice clips. Like these clips, you see these guys right here. Uh, the clips are, they're good, man. I mean, they're, they're sturdy clips. So for the money, it's a decent, it's, you know, uh, it's, it's better than a, you know, a pile set, I'm sure. Um, all those pile mics, I'll get into those in a little bit. Uh, my overheads, I've talked about these a little bit. Uh, these are MXL 603s. I got a pair of them. They are really, really, really bright. Um, I personally, I mean, they're, I've kind of figured out how to use them a little bit. Um, but I personally, uh, would, to do it again, I probably wouldn't buy them. I'd probably go with a different microphone. Um, just because, just because the high end on them is, they're really, really, really super bright. Uh, one of the mistakes I made was, I didn't even realize this till I redid my recording rig the other day was just kind of going through everything is I I had rolled high end off I had rolled a ton of high end off but my snare would always like I was having this horrible problem of um, the snare was coming through the overheads and it was it was actually too cracky no matter what I did to that snare it was too cracky um, I just realized that I had compression going to, to tape so I took that off, and I was actually able to add some high end back into the into the sim, into the overhead. So um, I, my first recording is done. I haven't started mixing it yet, but uh, I'm gonna take a look at that and see. Hopefully, hopefully that makes a difference. All right, now we're gonna go around um, to the uh, other side of the kit. Actually, no, we're gonna do this um because i'm sure you guys don't want to see my crappy garage or my crappy basement because it's it's a this is a basement basement right here i mean this is eric foreman wouldn't want to be in this basement it's terrible um so let me shoot around here we'll edit all this out coming around to the back this is the back this is the back of the stage so to speak um i got some of my snare drums here i got another drum set there uh, I got our snare room here. So my slingerling kit here in the cases is one of my Ludwig kits. So let's go around here and let's talk a little bit about my lighting, my lighting rig for the back here for the up lights and what I'm using on. Uh, oh, what's that? We'll talk about this guy. So I did a review a while back on pile microphones, and this is a pile that I'm using on my snare drum. Uh, I, I did a, a AB a pile versus an SM57, and I was actually kind of impressed with these piles. They're a not bad mics. They're $12. It's a $12 microphone. Who cares if it doesn't last forever, you know? Um, so it, it's really, I mean, it's $12. So I'm using a, a pile on the snare drum here, um, and I'm using a pile just to get some hi-hat wash. Um, it actually doesn't sound too bad, especially like a tight chick. I can get some decent, decent hi-hat sounds. Um, my snare drum. This particular snare drum is a Ludwig Superphonic. Some say it's the most recorded snare drum in history. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. It, it may very well be. It was used on a lot of recordings. Um, it is this is what is this is kind of like um the gold standard for snare drums um not that it's the best snare drum but it's a versatile snare drum it can kind of do everything you can crank it up it's got a nice crack to it you can you can play with the bottom head tuning and and get some real throatiness out of it uh that Ludaloy material is is kind of a uh it's kind of a signature sound if the, I do have one complaint about these snare drums. 
every Superphonic I've ever owned. Every single one. Um, I've got a 50th anniversary six and a half or a 14. I got this one. I've had some other ones in the past. I have super uh, super sensitive in the past. They all they all back out. All the lugs back out where you hit rim shots. Um, I tried these things. I recently bought these from Gibraltar. They don't work. I mean, they do. It, it, I think it slows it down, but. Um, yeah, you know, I just they, they do back out. All right, so let's talk about my up lighting here. These guys, um, one of the perks of working in the audiovisual industry is sometimes we get we get rid of stuff, and they got rid of these. Um, one of the companies I work for, these are old chroma cues. They're just they're really old, bulky lights, but they they do the trick. I mean, they get a nice. Got a nice wash. I mean, they're really, really hard to um, change colors on them, though. No. Oh, my battery's going dead. Damn it. Okay. Uh, I got to wrap this up. All right. So here's my interface. This is a Behringer XR18. Um, this is... I actually bought this to use as a PA system. I've never actually taken it out. Just the opportunity never rose. Um, but it is a really cool, inexpensive interface. And it does have Midas preamps in it. So the preamps, the mic preamps, are not bad preamps at all. Uh, it gets really decent sound, and it, it's it's got some cool features. Um, it's wi the wireless is crap in it, but you can run an external router. I always run it hardwired to my laptop. Um, so I've never really had any issues with um, the signal going down. Um, but it, it, you can run it wirelessly, and it does have, like, some iPad software. Um, it's got a lot of built-in effects, a lot of built-in compression, which I don't really use unless it was on accident, like with my overheads, where I was accidentally sending comp compression to it. Um, I didn't realize it. I do on my Toms. I do send a tiny, tiny, tiniest little bit of gate to get rid of some of the um, after low-end rumble after you hit one. I mean, if you, if you hear this guy goes on if i may if i may quote nigel tough go but you come back it's still still sustaining so to get rid of that a little bit that's a good thing it is a good thing but when it's going in a tom mic i just i put a little tiny gate that i send the tape on it and that's built into the uh the xr software uh my uh, oh my pedal this is uh, Tomba Iron Cobra double pedal. I don't know the. I don't remember the model on it. It's old. I bought this back in 2000, 2001. Uh, it's it's actually it's it's wore out. I mean that left pedal. That's like <laughs> it's uh, that right there. Really difficult. It's like it's like it's like stuck in molasses. It feels like it's really it's got to be taken apart. It probably needs new bearings. New, you know, it's it really needs to be gone through. I think I think it's time to retire it. Um, I played a, 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 a five thousand the other day, and I couldn't believe how fast I could how fast I could, my left foot could go on that thing. And this thing is it's terrible. So it's time to, to uh, Time to get rid of that sucker. Um, here, here, my recording. What I'm using for um, my computer. This is a MacBook Air. I don't, I don't remember the year. Um, I bought it used because uh, Apple stuff is way too expensive. <laughs> so I just bought a used MacBook Air. Um, I'm using uh, Reaper. Uh, you can see right here. I got my latest cover that I'm going to do. Sneak peek, just in case this comes out before this does. That's St. Jimmy off of uh, uh, American Idiot album, Green Day. Love that song. So that's going to be my next cover that I was planning on recording today. I don't know if I'm going to get to it. Um, let's see. I got, uh, that's about it. Um, I mean, I'm running Reaper. Reaper is my software. I think a lot of guys use Reaper. Um, I actually paid for it. I'm not, uh, I'm not being cheap and waiting for it to start up. I paid the 60 bucks or whatever. I'm not running any plugins. Um, everything I use on Reaper is stock, so I haven't bought any plugins yet. Uh, that may change. Um, 
Let me see if I can think of anything else. Oh, there is one little anomaly here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this with my Ludwig kit. Um, if you look, this guy, I don't know if you can see it in the video, this Tom is actually a little cloudier than this Tom. Um, I added this one, this 18. I probably, let me try my phone. I never went through the sizes. Um, my Rat Tom's a 14, 24, 14 by 24 inch kick drum. Uh, this floor Tom is a 16, and this one is an 18, 16 by 16, and 16 by 18. Um, this one I bought later on. I added this Tom. Um, I bought it off eBay. Um, I think I paid, I got a really good deal on it. I paid 300 bucks, which is a killer deal for an 18 inch Vista Light floor Tom. They're like, Vista Light, 18 inch Vista Lights in any color are hard to find. They're just, every, they're real coveted because that's what bottom plate. Um, not blue ones though. Uh, but if you look, there is some cloudiness. And uh, Gretsch Nut, who, uh, go check out his channel. He's got a great channel. Um, he does a series called Banging on a Budget. He used to work for Cadillac Plastics, which made these, uh, which made these, the material for these shells. And I asked him about it, and he said most likely it was something in the manufacturing process caused it to, he, he, or I'm sorry, he says he doubts there was something in the manufacturing practice that made it cloudy. He said it could have been a, a, other things. He said it just may need to be buffed. Um, uh, so I, I've never done that. I've never wet sanded it. It's just something I've always kind of lived with. Uh, but that's about, that's about it for my rig rundown. Um, I'm gonna do this for every piece of gear I own. Um, every snare drum, every drum set, um, every new microphone that comes in. Um, I'll probably even use my camera. I do, one of my cameras is, I don't know where it is, but I do, my, as far as video, I use, this is my iPhone. This is what I use, an iPhone 6. And then I also use a GoPro. And every once in a while, I'll add a second iPhone in. Uh, but. That is about it. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe if you like these videos. I know this went on a while, but I had a lot to talk about. I will see you guys next time.